Welcome to the show, everybody. I am Sam, the movie mechanic. Today, I am joined by a beloved actor whose work on 30 Rock has made him a household name across the United States. He's also a former bouncer, and he's got real opinions about life that he shares regularly on social media. Today, I welcome Mr. Grizz Chapman to the show. Grizz, thank you for taking the time to talk with me today. What's going on? What's going on, man? How's everybody doing out there? We're doing really good. It's actually starting to cool off finally here in Arizona. Oh, you in Arizona? Oh. Yeah, man. We just finally had our first day under 100 degrees after oh, you, five you burning months. up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let me ask you: Does does anybody call you by your given name, or is it is just Grizz now forever? Uh, well, actually, I before I even got the role of of Thirty Rock, I was Grizz. So. Yeah. Uh, they've been calling me Grizz for over 20 years. Yeah. Man, and so. Does anybody, do you only get called by your given name when you're in trouble or is that uh, not even them? Uh, very few call me by my, my, my given name, my mother. Yeah. And uh, my wife occasionally, she'll call me by uh, my, my government name. <laughs> yeah that's that's how you know if you're getting scammed right it, it shows up and it says your given name rather than your common name well uh first off you did 80 episodes on 30 rock uh, as well as several episodes of of a spinoff live in excel with grizz and dot com where you played a bodyguard slash bouncer for tracy morgan's character um so what I wanted to ask is, how much did your time as a bouncer inform that role? Well, um, really, the two had nothing to do with each other. I mean, we were we weren't security. Like a lot of people thought that we were security just because of the way they made it look. Yeah. But we were actually just big best friends. <laughs> you know, we were just bigger than the average person. So like an entourage. Yeah, so we were more friends more than per se security that and we just happened to be bigger than the normal human. <laughs> <laughs> and we we would just get Tracy out of trouble. So it was, you know, truthfully it was just two separate, you know, two separate entities that uh that people just automatically assumed that's what we were because we were so big. Yeah, that seemed like you had a, a bit of a fixer role then in 30 Rock, right? Where you're you're trying to get Tracy's character out of trouble. Yeah, most of the time that's that's what we were doing. We were either wasting his money on foolish uh investments <laughs> or trying to get him out of you know uh trouble or uh he calls us drunk on someone's lawn and we gotta go get him. Yeah. You must have some crazy stories from those bouncer days though, right? I mean, yes, I've, I've, you know, I've done security. Uh, I started security when I was 17 going on 18. And I've, I, I, I did that all the way up until, uh, into my late forties. Um, I still, even after I got the show, I still did bodyguard work because you know it's just what I was doing all that time I was doing it for years uh and I had already made a name for myself in the business so it would be you know kind of stupid to to turn down work but the hardest thing was when I would be with a client and a fan would come up and they don't know who to take a picture of first. So a lot of the times um, I would have to take the background when um, when it came to be being with certain individuals, certain artists, um, I wasn't taking a picture with my client, you know what I'm saying? Right. But, but most of the fans, you know, they they don't get it. They don't they don't see the difference. So when they when they see me and they don't, you know, they realize that I'm working, but 
at the same time, they still want to, uh, they still want that picture or, or they still want to talk to me. Yeah. Because you're, you know, your star is, is up on the rise as well. So they, you know, two for one essentially. Right. Basically. And then, you know, a lot of the times they're like, their reactions are like, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> type of thing. But, you know, for the most part, it, it worked out. So what, 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 what 99% of the time, what would happen is they would take a picture of who I, who, whatever client that I was with. And then I would feel them take a picture from like the side or, you know, you know, but it wasn't that, that pose picture. Gotcha. You know, I, I have a, one of my best friends was in security. He did uh, security at a club here in Scottsdale for a while. And one of, one of the things that he'd always talk about is whenever the fight broke out, he would just count to 10 before he stepped in. Because by the time he got to 10, the, the, the people in the fight would be completely winded. You ever have any experience like that or any tips like that? Well, I never really um, ran into a situation. I always kind of uh, assessed the situation before I went into it. Um, but a lot of the times things happen so fast, you know, you just got to kind of react and be on your, 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 your toes. But, um, you know, like it, it really all depends on the situation too, because if it's a shooting, you know, you gotta, you know, you don't run. I tell people all the time when you, when you hear shooting, just don't up and start running because you very well might run in the direction where the, where the bullets are coming from. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, in a shooting, just take a moment, gather your thoughts. Don't, and, and, you know, I, and I know this is a lot to, to ask of a person that's never probably never been in a, that type of situation, but you got to gather yourself, gather your thoughts and just be patient and wait because you got to see where it's coming from because you could very well run into the situation. Yeah, that's good advice. Um, yeah, I had, you know, I've, I used to live in South Bend, Indiana, and I remember picking up friends for church. And and as we were driving one time, a buddy of mine was talking about how he was at a at a convenience store and his brother was saw a guy that owed him twenty dollars. And when he went to go ask for the, the money, the guy pulled a gun and as they were running out of the store, he started shooting at him. And luckily it was a, a short barrel pistol, so they didn't. The bullets were not accurate, but you know, it didn't have was, any range. Right, exactly. Um, but it was, you know, those types of things are so scary. And it's hard to keep your head on straight. Well, in that particular situation, he was blessed and God was on his side. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in another life, I was on American Ninja Warrior. And one of the guys that was next to me in line was Americus Abasamas. And he's like a sumo wrestler uh, turned actor, but all the roles that he ever got were basically sumo wrestler or uh, bouncer security type. Um, in a similar vein, you did an absolutely hilarious short where you played a prisoner uh, who, who was the biggest guy in the yard, right? <laughs> he, was, he was always getting picked on because he's the biggest guy. And uh, he was tired of being targeted by all the new inmates. Oh my gosh, it was very funny. I, I really enjoyed that short. Um, what is something that you would like people to know about the inner workings of the big and tall? Um, well, well, first, I, I would like to, to say that um, we, we, we are more capable um, of doing different roles, more so than the the bouncer stand right here or the or the the goon or the thug you know uh, you know i could be a big doctor you know i mean it's not common and it and it kind of it might look 
crazy on camera, you know, a uh, big person with, with such a big stature, you know, you know, holding a stethoscope, you know, <laughs> trying to, you know, do somebody, but we are capable of, uh, of doing those things. You know what I'm saying? We can play uh, lawyers, presidents, doctors, you know, we, we could play other characters, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Um, and another thing that uh, people don't, don't realize, anybody above 6'10", um, or even 6'5", um, things are not built for us. You know, just to just take, for instance, see, I you know, I grew up 70s and 80s, so I wasn't blessed with the, 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 the type of transportation that they have now. So when you get on the bus, there's a little bit more roomier, the, the height of the bus is a little taller. So when I was going to school, you know, when I used to get on the bus, I got on the bus like this. Oh, man. <laughs> so just imagine you know, getting on a crowded bus in the morning and, you know, you got to stand like this for an hour and a half because it's no, it's no seat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, so tough, man. I, I would definitely say that things are not built for us. You know, unfortunately, you know, it, it's built for everyone else but us. Yeah, I have a nephew and he's six foot nine. And he works at a grocery store. And I told him if he really wanted to, to get promoted, he had to wear a t-shirt with his face on it so that people could look him eye to eye. What do you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. At least they'll get to know who he is. Yeah. This um, is a definite a conversation starter. Yeah. It, you know, in Arizona, there's a lot of seniors and they just, they just don't look up. Their neck's not strong enough. And I was really hoping he was really hoping to improve his PR with that kind of thing. Um, so what what is your dream role then? What, what is a role that you would love to take? If you were writing I, it for yourself, I, what would it be? I, I, always, I always wanted to play a badass superhero. You know, the villain, though. The villain. I, didn't, I, didn't want to, I didn't want to be like. Uh, like the Superman's or the Spider-Man's. I could, I, I would love to be, I could play like a, a B character, but like a, a, a menacing super villain. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So, so uh, what's this character like? What's, what's driving him to be a villain? Uh, he couldn't, he couldn't afford health care for his mother. For his brother? For his mother. Oh, for his mother. Okay. Yeah, she's she's slowly dying, and and he can't he can't help her. And then, uh, you know, that sends him off the deep end. So just the the rage and the frustration and the helplessness. Yeah, I can see that. Um, so what makes him a supervillain? Uh, well, because he he uh, let's see, how does he get his powers? Uh, one night he, uh, he goes out and, um, his mother needs something and, you know, he's been trying to get a job and he can't find one. And he happens on this truck that he thinks that it's an easy knockover and it's some experimental <laughs> drug inside. He gets his, his superpowers. And instead of using his powers for good, he instantly goes for evil and starts robbing and stealing. <laughs> there you go. Sounds like uh, the Daredevil or the Ninja Turtles origin, <laughs> but just flip the other, the other side of that coin. But, you know, come to think about it, that just sounds so terrible just now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we can workshop it. We can workshop it later. <laughs> Find us some, some good writers. Just, that sounds so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, I've spent a lot of time uh, researching this uh, for this interview, and I noticed that you spent a lot of time doing Instagram lives. Uh, we're talking about just 
just life. Yeah. Um, and what led you to to that kind of outlet? Well, well, during the pandemic, you know, you you sit there and you have so much stuff on your mind, and there's, you know, we're 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 social people, so we're so used to being around people, we're so used to touching people, and um, you know, now we just were cut off from the world, you know, and it's and it's not like it was you know, gradually over time, it was kind of like cold turkey. Like one day, you know, you were able to go outside, hug a person. And then the next day, you know, you hear the sirens in the background and and, and now you can't go outside, you know? Yeah. So um, just sitting here kind of bored. Um, I, I did, I did a, a, a podcast or, or one of these little talk shows and uh, I met a young lady by the name of Shawnee on uh, on there so i thought it'd be cool for us to do a little show together so we started it um we've done maybe uh 20 shows yeah um but then i got i got tired of begging people you know it, it's it's you know you, you you reach out to your friends your family whoever you'd be like yo i want to interview you for the show and the reactions that i was getting uh it got tiring you know what i mean i like i should have to beg you for you to promote yourself <clears throat> like you're i'm helping you promote yourself now if if we do the interview right and you pull me to the side and say you know what grizz that was a terrible interview don't hear that i can respect that you know what i'm saying and then we move on but don't don't hit me with the well, send me send me an interview first. Let me see one of your interviews first. That's to me. That's a that's a bigger slap in the face than than just telling me no. Mm -hmm. I would rather you just tell me no. You don't want to do it, opposed to you have to critique my work first. Like me being who I am is enough. You know what I'm saying? That my 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 caliber of who I am as a person, aside of the acting. Just me as a person that the, the person that you know should be enough to know that he's not going to put himself or you in a position to embarrass yourself or himself. So, you know, I've had, uh, we've had ho a whole host of people. We've, uh, we've done Method Man, uh, Sherry Shepard, John Hamm. Uh, we did, um, Judah Freelander, we did Tina Fey. Um, we did a whole host of people. So yeah. for for those people to do it with 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 just without a without a a, a drop just a drop of a hat. Okay, no problem. When, where, I, I'll do it. And then to have somebody to put you through all those, the you know, jump through all those hoops for an interview, it just it just got tiring. So then um what I what I started doing was just going live on Wednesdays, just talking, yeah. you know, wh whatever I see or uh, whatever happened during the week, you know, and 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 I give people an opportunity if they want to come on and vent and and just talk because believe it or not, um, people are lonely. You know, people people are like I said, people are social people, so they used to to going out and being in contact. So if you can go on live and you know put the put the acting to to the uh, to the side. But if you if you can go on live for an hour and have someone entertain you, why not? And it's it's it's, it's a human interaction. So because we try to read the comments. So if you if you do comment um and 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 and, and I, what I've noticed is people love their comments being read, so it it feels like they're being heard. It, it feels like they're being seen. Um, they 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 tend to, uh, you know, they they tend to feel like they're part of something, and you know, that could very well help someone in the long run because again, we don't know what people are going through now. 
sitting home by themselves, you know, uh, maybe out of work, um, or working from home, and they used to, you know, getting up at six in the morning, getting that bagel, getting that coffee, hitting the train, you know, you you take those things out of people's lives, they they feel useless. Sure. In a sense, you know, so we just did it just to bring a little happiness back to the world. And we just talk about what whatever's on our minds, you know. Are there any are there any common threads that that come up again and again? Um, current conversations, you said common threads. Are there any common threads that come up in your conversations? Uh, we talk about everything. We talk about everything talk about from the president to Tyler Perry's bad wigs we we, we talk about everything um okay so do you have any hot takes on on how the lockdown is affecting your community or, or your city I think I think it's affecting everybody equally you know what I'm saying because again we are social people you know and let's let's take Let's take finances out of it. Um, and, and that's a big part, but let's take finances out of it for a minute. Now you're telling me that I can't have a Thanksgiving dinner with my closest friends and family because of, uh, 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 you know, some sort of COVID uh, plague that's running rampant. Um, you can't go to the grocery store. Uh, you know, you you can't even go and have a couple of beers with your friends because you you're in fear. So, I think this is 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 affecting everybody, and we're we're in a we're in a, we're in a not so happy place, where before we had a little light at the end of the tunnel, right? We we could get up, go to work. Even even on our darkest day, right? There was still some light at the end of the tunnel. It, it, this particular situation, it doesn't look like there's any light at the end of the tunnel. Because just like when you when you think that we're out of it, here comes a super rhino bug now that <laughs> is stronger than COVID and it kills you instantly. <laughs> So, you know, it, it just it just seems like there's no way out. You know, it just seems like we're we're just at a revolving door right now. We, we're not we're not getting past where we need to get past. Yeah, I mean it's a it, it's a tough question, and I think I think a lot of times we we're we might be looking at the wrong people to be making the decisions for us. You know, and and maybe it's it's more important that we make those decisions for ourselves because everybody has their own risk they're dealing with, you know? Yeah, I definitely believe that. I, and, and what makes me very saddened is that they're slowly but surely taking away our rights and people don't realize it. Like, I'm, if, if you want to get the vaccination for yourself, go do so. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, but don't shun the people who don't want to take the vaccination for whatever reason. Right. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we should be able to, at this point, be able to come to some sort of median and say, hey, you know, this group of people want to take the vaccination. This group, group of people don't. Let's still build together and still wash our hands. Because you take the vaccination, you still got to wear your mask. You know what I'm saying? You still yeah, got to wash your hands. You still gotta uh, have social distancing. So, why are you still mad at at the person that didn't want to do it when you still gotta do all these things anyway? You know, and 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 it and it baffles me that you 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 we're in this situation, right? And in some instances, you say to yourself, "Okay, let's open the parks again." So now you got 19,000 people in a baseball field, but nobody is complaining about the baseball field. Nobody's complaining about the football field. Right. 
but those are, are, are some of the main places where people are getting sick. But nobody's talking about those places. Right. Because, because it makes, you know, because it makes money. Yeah. You know? And now, and, and just just up until recently, now they're forcing the, the vaccination for people who want to go and attend uh, the baseball games and the football games and the basketball games. Yeah. You know? I like, yeah. take my son, for instance. You know, he, he got this job, pretty good job. And, you know, when he first got the job, they, they said that, you know, the vaccination wasn't going to be an issue. You know, then later down the line, you know, uh, things change and then they, now they're pushing the vaccination on him. Everything in me wants to tell that, tell this young man, don't take that vaccination. You know what I'm saying? Because they're taking your rights away, right? But in the same token, he has to work. He has to live. He has to be a, 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 a productive citizen. So now he has to take it. So even if this job, uh, he says to himself, well, I'm not going to take it because, you know, forget this job. The next job he goes after, they're going to want him to take it. Right. So at, at some point, you're going to have to take it. But it, it was it was really heartbreaking that they they took my son's choice from him. Right. You know? Yeah, that's the that's kind of the horror of this whole situation. Um, you know, I I was watching, I don't know if this is crazy talk, but I was watching a movie. It was a zombie movie, but nobody was getting killed by the zombies. They were just getting turned into more zombies. And I was like, okay, if no one's getting killed, what what's the scary part about the zombies? And it was that they were losing their ability to choose their their human thought process and they were becoming mindless creatures and that was a big that was like a big mind-blowing experience that there there's this in, instinctive fear of losing your humanity and your ability to choose and i think that at the heart of this debate there's a lot of that fear going on and and i don't think the 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 pro vaccine mandate side has done anything to assuage those kinds of fears that they're not you know, addressing I mean, any of them. He, uh, his father uh went and got the vaccination and you know how uh with older people that not that they don't understand but they don't understand right so he, he gets the vaccination and he he, ha, he has underlying conditions. Um, this meeting no longer has a time limit. He has underlying he has underlying conditions. So he stops wearing his mask because he got the vaccination. You know, a month later he's dead. Because he caught COVID again. Yeah. And he had the vaccination. So I think it, it gives a certain people a false sense of invincibility. Sure. That it's 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 really not there. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with that hundred percent. And then now they got commercials where if you're in a hurricane, <laughs> go get your vaccination. <laughs> Oh, oh man. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure you're you're aware of this recent kerfuffle with Nicki Minaj and and her her stance on the whole thing. You got yeah. any thoughts on that? Uh not really. You yeah. know, because I I think she's she's probably speaking from a place that affected her in her own way. But I, I just think she kind of went about it the wrong way. And um, because you you say stuff and you come up with these things, <clears throat> but now how, where's the solution? Where's where's your voice 
with the with the big wigs. Like I, I want her to go meet with the powers that be. You know, because we're we're at the point now where they're paying attention to what she said. Mm-hmm. Right. So go have a sit down with the powers that be and try to try to fix something opposed to just being trendy. Yeah. There's a, there's that song in Hamilton about the room where it happens. Right. And, and I think it's important that you, if you have the opportunity to be in the room where it happens, that you don't lose that, that opportunity. Exactly. And I think she, she had the opportunity to be in a room and, and she let it slip through her fingers. Yeah. I think, I think she, she had an opportunity to really, really make a change or try to make a change and it, it slipped through her fingers. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, there's, it's kind of a dark, a dark situation all around, but uh, are there any things that you are doing to keep the light going in your own life? Well, unfortunately, right now, the, this pandemic uh, has stifled me a little bit because of, you know, I have pre-existing conditions. Sure. Uh, I don't want to take the vaccination. Right. So now that puts me in a position where now I have to make a choice. So I've, I've chosen to kind of just stay away from people. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and that being said, um, you know, that makes my, my, my job a little bit more difficult because, sure. you know, not all the, the good roles, they don't want to see you on a, on a pre-tape. They want you to come in. Yeah. And I, and I'm just not ready to, to, to go in yet. Sure. You know, the only place that I'm really venturing to would, uh, and, and it feels like, uh, the walking dead or, or, or apocalypse or something where you got to venture out into this abyss to to get uh some food so the only place i'm really taking a chance with going out right now is you know going to get some food and uh going to the doctor yeah you know unfortunately sure well um you know on a a lighter note i have a good friend and and He's a big fan of 30 Rock, and he wanted me to ask you about your character from 30 Rock, the Grizz from 30 Rock, and how he would make time for the strip club as well as for uh, more intellectual pursuits, shall we say. Um, is there room in, in life for both of those things, kind of the mundane and, and the divine? I mean, you, whatever floats your boat, you yeah. know? I mean, I, I, I think you know, if that's what you like to do, you know, go run around. But um, I think that's kind of where the, the character and me where we kind of split because I'm yeah, not really part, way, part ways right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not really into the uh, to the strip clubs. And um, because the only, only reason being is because I I worked in the, in the strip club for almost 10 years, 12 years. So I see I see a lot of the stuff that people don't see. <laughs> And I see like um, you know, the things that the that the women do in the background. Mm-hmm. And it, and it's a turnoff. Sure. You know, it's not it's not like, you know, people always used to say, yo, man, you work in that club. I know you, I know you, you know, doing everybody and this, that, and the third. I said, man, it's not like that. You know, because you you see her, you know, when she's got her fresh makeup done and she just got on stage and that's who you see. I see her at the end of the night when she drunk, belligerent, out of control, cussing. <laughs> you know, that's the part I see. That's the part I gotta deal with. You know, the, the part I gotta deal with is now I gotta get this this woman to her car safely. Yeah. You know. Um you know, she she got beef with another girl, so they start fighting. That's what I got to deal with. So, I don't I don't see the the glitz and the glamour that everyone else sees. I see the the women that really don't take care of themselves, 
the way they should. And I see the women that do certain things and uh, and then go, right, you know, go right back out there and, and do what they do. Yeah. So I see a lot of things behind the scenes that uh, that people don't see, which is a is a complete turnoff for me. For sure. It's it's that old saying, you know, once you see how the sausage is made, you don't want to eat it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, what about, uh, you know, what are the the pursuits that that uh, if you if you had your way, what are the pursuits you would the more intellectual pursuits that you would be chasing after? Uh, on the show or no, or you personally? Um, right now, it's, it, like I said, it's, it's, it's just hard. You know what I'm saying? It's hard now because now we have to revamp everything. We have to rethink everything. You know, everything is just not as, 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 uh, simplistic as it was before. Yeah. And, and, and that's on the smallest terms, like, before it was so easy, you you could just go outside and you know rent a space and 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 kind of do whatever. You know now I'm 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 in the space now where I'm just ready to go chill by the pool. Yeah. You know, and 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 not necessarily chase anything right now. Um, because in, in this pandemic, what I've what I've learned is. A lot of the materialistic stuff that I, I chased, the money, I really don't need it. You know, what's, what's more important to me is is talking to my son and, and helping him navigate through the, the, this crazy life that he has in front of him. Yeah. And, and helping my daughter navigate through life. You know, that's a little bit more important to me than than chasing anything at this point, you know? Absolutely. Because in, in this in this second half of my life, um, the, the almighty dollar is just not important to me anymore. You know, the way it used to be. Yeah. You know, in my younger years where I used to chase it, chase it, chase it. And now I'd rather have a, a nice dinner uh, and, and sit and watch some movies with my kids. You know, okay, then. so you have you have two kids. Yeah, I have two kids and a whole host of, of other ones too. Like I'm I'm a surrogate father for all my son's friends and and my daughter's friends, and you know, oh, you know how that goes. I I I do know how that goes. I have a number of kids myself, and you know, it, it, I'd rather them bring their friends to my house so I know what's going on rather than. Exactly. And, and, and that's what I used to do. Like he has a group of friends. I used to take them to uh, to the Poconos every year. Maybe four to five of his friends, maybe six. Every year I used to take them to the Poconos. And then now real life happens. You know, this one goes to this college. This one is playing ball over here. This one's playing football over here. So it's good to see that the kids that I, I help raise are, are are productive you know that's great. And it's, and it's it's kind of sad that i don't get to see them as much but i know why i don't get to see them that that much which makes me happy though you know because i know they're out there they're doing their thing and whatever whatever i instilled in them for that little bit amount of time affected them you know affected them e even if it affected them just a little bit yeah. you know like even right when they first went to high school <laughs> i uh i asked their mothers could i teach them how to put on condoms because you know they're going into high school they you know and the girls today they're a little bit faster than the girls that i dealt with oh my gosh that makes me my day. <laughs> so i asked i asked their parents was it was it okay so i had maybe uh, five or six of them at my house. And I said, you, you know, you guys going to high school, just down at third, I said, you, you, you guys, you know, you, you guys are being intimate with anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. 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 I said, you, you using condoms. Yeah. 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 And I know everybody's lying. <laughs> so I had a, a box of condoms 
and a banana, a couple of bananas. So I said, put the condom on the banana. Everybody put it on raw. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I had to teach them how to do it. You know, yeah. like those are the little things that are very important because, you know, you don't want your kids to have kids at an early age and not ruin their lives, but it just slow, it slows their life down. Yeah, complicates things. At, at this point, they don't, they don't need to be slowed down, you know? Right. So things like that are, 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 are a lot more important to me than actually chasing something. Yeah, you know, sure. Trying to uh, help them navigate their lives, I think, are, are, are a lot more important to me now than, than anything else. Well, I love that. Well, Grizz, thank you so much for taking the time. Where can people find you? Well, if they want to come and darken my doorstep and bother me, I'm on uh, on Instagram is Grizz Thirty Rock, uh, and on Facebook is Grizz Chapman. And you know, if you guys sing, rap, do poetry, you're more than welcome to come on my show and uh, exhibit your talents. Um, yeah, let's do it. All right, very good. You heard it right here, Grizz Thirty Rock on Instagram, Grizz Chapman on Facebook. Uh, you're on Wednesday nights. You doing your live still? Yeah, Wednesday nights, nine o'clock. Very good. Uh, otherwise, you can follow us, uh, Movie Mechanic at D League Productions on YouTube. And uh, we're also on Instagram. Also, our Dodgeball League is live again. So <laughs> go nice. check out Triple D Dodgeball. We are playing uh, right, right after you watch Chris Chapman do his live. You can watch us do our dodgeball games because we're Wednesday nice. nights too. <laughs> nice. Uh, but appreciate you taking the time, Grizz, and that'll do it for our show. All right, now thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.